Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. We're going to be taking a look at making an alpha channel based upon the luminance in an image. Now, alpha channels are very useful because they allow you to put transparency into a graphic that's stored. Then, when you bring it into a video editing tool or a compositing application, it will key or composite often in real time. Let's see how this works. So I have a photo here of a brick wall with some transparent areas in it here, and we're seeing the sky behind it. Now this is currently a single layered graphic, and we need to start our alpha channel out by making an initial selection. Let's go ahead and make a selection here in the sky. We'll go ahead and click on the sky area with the color range command and start to drag. Notice it picked up the clouds, and we got a pretty good selection, but we need to add to that overall. So I'll hold down the shift key and click in a few other areas to pick up more of the sky. And as we drag there, you see it begins to do a good job of picking all that up. Let's go ahead there. Got a little bit more right up here at the top. And there we go. Did pretty well. We could back that off at the fuzziness slider if we get a little too much. And that looks good there. Let's go ahead and invert that selection. So it is selecting instead of the sky, the actual brick wall. There we go and click OK. So you see we have an active selection right now, and what we want to do is store that. Now, in order to store an alpha channel, you have to have a layered file. By default, your photo is going to be flattened, so you'll need to promote it to an actual layer. In the Layers panel here, we can double click and give this a logical name. Once we have that, it's a quick click to add a layer mask. Right here at the bottom of the panel, I could just click and it added the mask for me. Now, that worked out pretty well. Notice we have the transparency grid, and we're just about set. What we're going to do now is go ahead and crop this image to be sized for video. So let's take advantage of the Crop tool and a targeted crop. I'll press C for Crop, and in the Options bar here, type in the size. Let's do 1920px for pixels by 1080px, and that's going to be the proper size for an HD project for 1080. We'll go ahead and click and drag and mark out the area we want. There we go. That works well. And before we go ahead and apply this, let's change this from delete to hide. This way it's going to hide those areas, but not actually permanently discard the pixels, giving you greater flexibility down the road. We'll press the return key, and the image is now cropped and sized. But because we chose hide, we actually have all those pixels left up on top there or on the bottom if we needed them. Let's go ahead and store that as an alpha channel. Now, in order to make an alpha channel, there's lots of ways to do this. I'm going to show you the fastest and the easiest. If you're using Photoshop CS or later, you've got these actions built in. Go ahead over to the Windows menu and choose Actions, and then your Actions panel will come up. Make that big enough to see, and what you're going to want to do is click on the sub-menu here and choose Video Actions. Now that we've got the actions loaded and transparency in our document, we're ready to store this as an alpha channel. The easiest way to do this is with the video actions. Let's go ahead here and take a look at both of these. You'll see we have two alpha channel actions. The first one here is going to go ahead and make an alpha channel, and the second one is going to go ahead and invert it. Now, if you're working on an Avid editing system, you'll use the inverted alpha. The rest of you out there, whether it be After Effects, Final Cut, or Premiere, use the standard alpha channel action. Go ahead and select that and press play. And it says it's going to make an action for you and make sure that no layers are visible that you don't want in the final graphic. When you're all set, just click continue and it's done. If we take a look over at the channels here, you'll see we have the alpha channel for the document that's going to store the transparency. In fact, if we just turn that off and zoom in, we can get a good look at that. And notice it's stored all of those areas as transparency. Now, you might notice a little bit of gray in here that we want to clean up, and that's partial transparency maybe we didn't intend. We can go ahead and click on the alpha channel, grab the paintbrush, B for brush, and load up our default colors of black and white. Make a little smaller brush and just paint over some of those specks there to clean that up. And you see that that's the easiest way to clean up any transparency errors in your alpha channel. But look how good that edge is there. It did a great job with that color range command of picking up the fine details. Holding down the space bar, I could pan around and just quickly touch up any stray black or dark gray pixels that I don't want. 
When the alpha channel is all set, we'll turn those layers back on, and now it's just a simple save job. We can go ahead and say File, Save As, and pick a format like Picked, TIFF, or Photoshop, and that'll go ahead and store the transparency. Let's go with the TIFF there, and we'll call this Wall Final. And it's all set. Alpha channels with layers as a TIFF file, save. Make sure to put no additional compression in unless you absolutely must, so we'll leave that set to none. And a very important mistake here that you want to avoid, do not check save transparency. If you check that box, it's going to counteract with the alpha channel, and the two basically knock each other out. What you want to do is just save this with the alpha channel. Do not use the save transparency option, as it will not work for video. We'll click OK. It says yes, it's going to save with layers, that's fine. And it's saved, and we're all set for our video workflow. You can bring this graphic on in into any app, whether it be a video app or a compositing app, and it'll have that transparency embedded for real-time performance. Hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Photoshop for Video, brought to you now by Creative Cow. Be sure to head on over to creativecow.net, where you can check out the Photoshop forums, post questions, get answers, and see some more great tutorials. And if you haven't heard, We've released a brand new chapter for our Photoshop for Video book, all on Photoshop CS4. You can pick that up for free over at Focal Press's website. Thanks again for joining us.